Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's try to get a better understanding what the Maclaurin series actually is and what it does for us. So here we have the general format of the Maclaurin series. If we have any sort of function f of x, this is the infinite expansion as n goes from 0 to infinity. And when we write it out, you can see that the coefficients are the function evaluated at a, the first derivative of the function evaluated at a, the second derivative evaluated a, the third derivative evaluated a, with the denominator being 1 factorial, 2 factorial, 3 factorial, and so forth. And instead of writing x, x squared, x cubed, we write x minus a, x minus a squared, x minus a cubed. What does that a signify? Why do we need it? And then, of course, we know that if we let the a go to 0, then we end up with the equivalent function now called the Maclaurin series, which looks like this. Now, that is, of course, when we have the function being equal to e to the x. And that's the example we're going to use to try and figure out the differences between the Maclaurin series and the Taylor series and why we use one versus the other. Now, let's go back to the Maclaurin series and realize that if we have a function f of x, and let's say that this function is equal to e to the x, then the infinite expansion will look like this. And indeed, we can find the value of e to the x for any value of x by simply plugging in the value for x in here and adding up an infinite number of sums or an infinite number of terms. Of course, we wouldn't need to add an infinite number of them, probably 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 20, however many we need in order to come up with a number that's not too different from what we're trying to get to. The more terms we add, the more accuracy we have in the valuation of this function. But you can see it could take quite a few terms. It could take 10, 20, 30, 50 terms before we have an evaluation of e to the x for some value of x. And this is where the Taylor series comes in. So imagine we have a function f of x equals e to the x. If we take the derivative of that, it's e to the x. The second derivative, it's e to the x, and so forth. And later on, we're going to show you examples of different functions with the Taylor series. But let's start with the easy one, where the derivative of the function is equal to the function. And then if we evaluate those functions, the function, the derivative, first derivative, second derivative, and so forth, you can see that we have e to the a, e to the a, e to the a, and so forth, since the derivative is equal to the original function. Now, if we let a equals 1, then we get e to the first power, and when a is equal to 2, we get e to the second power, and so forth. Now, let's write out the Taylor series for a equals 1. So again, we go to this initial function right here, representation, and then we write that the first evaluation of the function at a, since a is equal to 1, that simply will be equal to e, because it was e to the first power. Then we have e divided by 1 factorial, e divided by 2 factorial, e divided by 3 factorial, and so forth for the coefficients. And then the variables, we have x minus 1, x minus 1 squared, x minus 1 cubed. If we now factor out an e, then we end up with e times 1 plus x minus 1 over 1 factorial, x minus 2 over 2 factorial, x minus 3 over 3 factorial, and so forth. In this case, again, remember, a was equal to 1. So what's the, what's the benefit? What's the use? Why would we have a Taylor series? How can we benefit from such a thing? We already have the Maclaurin series, and after all, the Maclaurin series can evaluate the function for any value of x. But as I mentioned before, you will need quite a few terms, especially as the value of x begins to become large, like 3 or 4 or 5, then you're going to need quite a few of these terms to evaluate the function e to the x. So let's say we want to evaluate the function for x equals 1. If we now write the series out like this, the Taylor series, notice if we plug in the value x equals 1, every one of these terms goes to 0, 1 times e is e, and we get the exact value for e to the x. Let's say we want to evaluate the function for x equals 2. Then we write the Taylor series like this with a equals 2, and then you can see that when we plug in the value x equals 2, all these terms go to 0, and I get e, 1 times e to the second power, which is the exact value for the function e to the x for x equals 2. Well, what if we want to have the function evaluated for like 2.1 or 2.2? It turns out 
that if we write it like this, where a equals 2, and then we evaluate the function e to the x for a value close to x equals 2, this will still give you a value very close and very quickly to the correct result by simply plugging in, let's say, 2.1 here, if I want to evaluate e to the 2.1 power, and then you can see we only will need a few of these terms before we get very close to maybe three, four, five decimal places to the actual answer. So the idea with the Taylor series is that it allows us to find an evaluation of the function much more quickly by rewriting it as a Taylor series instead of a Maclaurin series with a very close to the value at which we want to evaluate the function. It doesn't take nearly as many terms, and that's the big advantage of using the Taylor series. So in the next video, we're going to show you an example of how to actually do that. I think it's the next video that I have in mind, but you'll see. Either the next video or the next video after that will show an example of a function where you can very quickly and easily evaluate the function by choosing an A that will get you very close to the number you want to plug into the series. And that's how it's done.